Hello, my name is Jenny Brown and I am the Health and Fitness Coordinator for San Antonio Oasis and today I'm going to be talking to you about brain fitness. Um, brain fitness is similar to physical fitness. Brain fitness activities are those activities that are thought to improve uh, cognitive functioning. Just as physical activity improves our physical health, many theorists claim that brain fitness has the potential to, again, dramatically improve our cognitive function and may actually help to prevent the decline in cognitive health as we age. Um, the actual response of brain fitness has been quite overwhelming um, as theorists begin to and researchers begin to increase their level of understanding the field of cognitive health, especially in the older adult, the, again, popularity of brain fitness has dramatically increased. Um, so we are going to offer this course to you as an overview for you to uh, actually improve your own cognitive health and also uh, provide you information to do so. So let's go ahead and begin by looking at the first slide, your changing brain. As you can see, we have a picture of the physical makeup of the brain as it occurs when we age. You will see an 87-year-old brain and you will also see a 27-year-old brain. And within the pictures, you will actually see widening valleys within those functioning areas of the brain. Now, these actual valleys fill with fluid, and for a long time, they thought that this is what impaired cognitive functioning. But as time has gone on, people actually now realize that cognitive functioning is likely, uh, more likely, I should say, to be caused by a loss of synapses. In other words, the connections between neurons through which information is transmitted. Let's go ahead and look at the next slide. Another thing that can contribute uh, to the changing brain or that does happen within the changing brain, uh, negative plasticity can contribute to an increased risk of falls. As we age, we begin to rely more and more on our vision for balance control. Uh, perhaps looking down at our feet may seem safer than looking straight ahead. But unfortunately, as a result, what happens is it robs the brain of communicating with the feet and other parts of the actual balance system. So in other words, in addition to walking with the head pointing downward, it has a negative effect on the entire balance system and can actually retrain the brain to fall. So let's go ahead and look at some terms that you're going to hear quite frequently within the field of brain fitness. The first picture that you see is a simulation of a synapse. And basically, you see the term the neuron or nerve cell. Again, the neuron or nerve cell is a cell in the nervous system that actually receives and transmits information. And in the picture, you can see more or less the information that's trying to gather to one another to each of the synapses to communicate. Um, additionally, you're also going to hear the term dendritic sprouting. Uh, as you can see, this is the process naturally through which connections with other neurons is made, um, whether it be stimulated directly or indirectly through imagined experience or real experience. The next thing we're going to look at is neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is also called cortical remapping. And neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections throughout the span of our life. Neuroplasticity also allows the neurons or nerve cells in the brain uh, to actually compensate for disease or injury by adjusting their activities in response to new changes or perhaps changes in the environment. Um, also, in addition to that, let's try an activity uh, that might give you an idea of more or less how these neurons connect and what's going on. So if you would, if you take a deep breath, very good, <laughs> and close your eyes. And as you have your eyes closed, relax and think about the worst traffic jam you have ever been in in your life. And we're going to think about the traffic jam quietly for a few moments. Very good. With your eyes continuing to stay closed, if you would stop and think about your most favorite food. Very good, and you're welcome to open your eyes. Um, many people find that they have experienced a lot of different sights or sounds, especially in a traffic jam. You're going to hear horns, perhaps a lot of uh, 
hogging and so forth. And then also with food, obviously, there's a lot of sights, smells, uh, senses that are going on within the whole experience of those thoughts. So basically, that's kind of a small example as what happens when we switch gears, so to speak, or we have different thoughts. Those neurons or synapses are connecting and uh, communicating with one another. So that's just a small example to give you an idea. The next thing we're going to look at is neurogenesis. And neurogenesis is the birth of new neurons. And as you can see here, we have congratulations on the birth of your new neurons. Um, recent studies have thought that this process or, or show that this process can continue throughout life. In addition, learning new things, exposure to a new yet benign or non-hostile environment, and physical exercise can actually increase neurogenesis. And we want to, again, create, continue this process throughout the span of our life. So I want to go ahead and share with you some um, activities and behavior changes to increase cognitive functioning. So how many of you have heard that by doing a crossword puzzle each day that you may increase your cognitive functioning. While this is true in one respect, there has to be two other things that are present in order to help you engage uh, in developing new neurons. Number one, you have to be motivated to do crossword puzzles. And secondly, you have to change the difficulty levels of the crossword puzzle. In other words, if you're not desire, if you have no desire to do a crossword puzzle, no motivation, and you're bored, then the chances of you developing new neuron activity is very slim. Additionally, if you don't change the level of the activity of the crossword puzzle, you're going to find that you stay in the same rut or at the same level. So it's important to increase those levels as you improve your cognitive health. Um, you want to make sure that you choose, as you can see on the slide, activities that you like. And there's nothing wrong with sticking with some of the things that you enjoy, but you also want to try new things, too, again, to increase um, that level of neurogenesis and learn new activities consistently. Every day, learn something different. Read a new book. Watch a new movie. Learn how to do something new. So let's go ahead and move on. And I guess everybody's pretty much heard the term memory of an elephant. Once the brain learns a skill, it doesn't forget. And so let's go ahead and look at the components of brain fitness. And the first thing we're going to look at is neurons that learn together grow together. And again, motivation is key to growing neurons. Um, one thing, a lot of times we develop friendships throughout our life, and it's important that we learn and grow from one another and share in our likes and preferences. Sometimes we find that if we're in a relationship with a friend and so forth, we, we, learn, we find out that maybe our friend doesn't want to quite learn the new things that we want to learn. So it's important while we keep our old friends, we also develop new friendships as well. Um, in addition, let's go ahead and talk about the components of brain fitness. So what I'm going to do is we're going to walk through each of these aspects. Um, the first thing is use it or lose it. Naturally, in this case, the it is your brain. <laughs> it can atrophy or develop naturally ne negative neuroplasticity from non-use. We talked about physical fitness and how we increase or improve our physical health by having physical activities. Just like when you work your arm and increase your muscle, it's the same thing with brain fitness. If you're not using it, naturally you're going to lose it eventually. And as a result, you will decrease in cognitive functioning. In an interview with Discover Magazine, let me take a look here, Dr. Michael Merzenich, a neuroscience professor at the University of California, San Francisco, stated, older people tend to want an easy life. They don't realize how bad it is for them. In other words, there's nothing wrong with once you're retiring from the work world to relax and enjoy life, but by the same token, to completely isolate yourself and not engage in any activities can actually reduce, again, your level of cognitive functioning. So that can become a very dangerous habit. The next thing we're going to look at is move it or lose it. Physical activity is key to cognitive functioning and a necessary part of brain fitness. And the reason for that is because the brain is made up of the same type of neurons as the heart and as such benefits from regular moderate intensity exercise such as dancing, walking, or riding a bike. So it's very important that each and every day that you try to accumulate at least 30 minutes of moderate intensity activity, not only for your physical health, but again, for brain fitness. Uh, also, you are what you eat. Nutrition is a key component to brain fitness. 
Eating for your health means naturally eating from the, rec the recommended servings from the various food groups. Uh, it's important to decrease trans and saturated fats, which can negatively affect blood uh, vessels in the brain the same way they do in the heart. At the same time, increasing whole grains and fruits and vegetables can have a positive effect on the blood vessels and naturally the heart. So you want to make sure that you're eating a well-balanced diet and eating three regular meals a day um, for, prop, for good brain fitness. Um, also think positive and learn to manage stress. Negative thinking and increased stress can actually kill off neurons and can prevent the growth of new neurons. Stress is a segue into cortisol, and cortisol, too much of cortisol, can be a very negative thing for physical health and for, again, the growth of new neurons. Practice making positive thinking a way of life. Instead of maybe constantly looking at what you can't do as you get older, look at what you can do. And as a result, if there is something that you feel is overwhelming, maybe a project you want to take on, rather than do it all at one time, take little pieces each day. Do it in small increments, something that's maybe more manageable for you to obtain. Also, uh, learn stress management techniques to help deal with everyday stressors. You know, a lot of times just meditation or prayer, if that works for you, or possibly uh, uh, sitting quietly with a candle lit or, or, or whatever, however you feel that relaxation uh, benefits you, just to kind of reduce the stress in your life. And remember, again, you don't have to do everything in one city. Do it in small increments. So let's go ahead and look at the next slide. Components of brain fitness continuing on. Practice lifelong learning. Don't stop with your lifelong learning. A lot of people sometimes have a tendency to stop with just a crossword puzzle or perhaps uh, one hobby. Continue to learn new hobbies and again increase those levels of learning especially if you are doing a crossword puzzle. Remember we talked about that earlier as you gradually go up the levels you're going to develop new neurons and expand your learning. Uh, if you have a hobby of quilting or knitting maybe try watercoloring. It, expand your level of learning. Um, also it doesn't mean repeatedly doing Sudoku or the same type of dance or, your, or puzzles as we, as we talked about earlier. You must consistently learn new things. So don't forget that. Very important. Challenge yourself daily. Go for that higher learning degree. There's a lot of community colleges that offer programs to increase your learning. Learn a new trade or discover a new hobby like woodworking or home repair. We talked about hobbies a moment ago. Whatever your mind can imagine, go ahead and do it. Don't hold yourself back. And also, make up your own mind. Don't run with the herd. A lot of times, we have to decide what our beliefs and values are because they're ours, not our families, not our friends, or not what tradition has told us to think. While it is important to have beautiful family traditions, it's also important to learn for yourself what's important to you, what you value, not what the TV or the media tell you to think. Maybe put aside TV for a little bit and start picking up a book or, again, getting involved in a hobby. Expand on, on, on your values and what's important to you. Take to the road. Try an overseas trip or to a state you've not visited before. Um, don't drive on the interstate anymore. Maybe take a new way home. Plan a trip. Go to Florida. Go somewhere. <laughs> but challenge yourself to explore uh, your geographical areas. I mean, don't stay within the same area over and over. Expand and learn something new. Make new friends, but keep the old. One really is silver and the other is really gold. While, again, our older friends are very important, lifelong friends are the relationships we've built, make new friends. Perhaps join the senior center or a social, act, a social event to where you meet new friends, their new interest. Also, do something for someone else. Help a child learn to read, donate time to the local food bank, or volunteer at your local senior center. There's so many opportunities for you to get involved with. Um, additionally, most important, find out what it is that makes you smile and brings you joy. It's good for the brain and for your overall health. And as you learn to do these brain fitness activities and you increase your level of learning, you find that your confidence, level will, your confidence levels will increase as well. So again, as we talked about all of, all of these opportunities, remember fine arts, business or computer skills, musical skills, home maintenance, cooking, gardening or animal care, volunteering, there's numerous things you can get involved in through brain fitness. So remember to keep the brain healthy and cognitive functioning at an, at an optimum, make sure you're learning, learning, learning.